What up y'all, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm taking a look at a fun, the most innovative little point and shoot camera I have ever seen. It's called the Fuji Instax Mini Evo. Let's get into it. My name is Dom and if you've watched any of my channel, you will know that I love instant cameras. I like having a fun little camera to be able to print things out and have a tangible print in your hand. It's perfect for like a social gathering or birthday party. I even use them at my weddings that I'm shooting because it's fun to just be able to hand the bride something as they come back from coming down the aisle, just an instant print. That's where the Fuji line of Instax cameras has absolutely crushed the game and taken over the market. They put out really nice cameras and the Polaroid Go line is just kind of trash. For more on that, check out my video of the comparing the two. But this is where I come in with the new camera from Fuji called the Instax Mini Evo. This is tech that we've never seen before. They call it a hybrid digital instant film camera. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. So in the past, in the Instax line of cameras, you take a photo and the photo prints out immediately taking not that long, you have the print in your hand, but you have a lot of pictures that are maybe overexposed or blurry. So you get a lot of throwaway prints that you don't need, wasting a lot of time, money, and frustration. But with this new hybrid digital camera, they've included a screen on the back game changing so that you can now take a photo, preview if you like the photo or not, just delete it if you don't, and then go ahead and take another one until you're happy with the photo. Then you simply click this lever. It is a little kind of a throwback to the film rewind. That lever then triggers the camera to print out the picture that you choose. And then you have only winners being printed out, saving yourself time, money, and frustration. Before I get ahead of myself talking too much about the technology, let's talk about the hardware and build quality and my user experience using the camera. So first let's talk about the lens that it comes with. This is a 28 millimeter equivalent F2.0 lens. So although that sounds nice and bright and shallow depths of field at F2, you gotta talk about it in comparison to the sensor. And the sensor is only a one fifth inch sensor so it's pretty tiny not that much bigger than some cell phone sensors in fact it puts out a 2560 by 1920 resolution so it's not like you know high def resolution or anything like that it's pretty low resolution so that f2.0 is not going to give you like shallow depths of field or anything like that but i will say this that lens and sensor pairing is plenty good quality for the size prints that this camera puts out especially with any type of decent light it starts to suffer a little bit in low light but you probably won't notice that because the flash will kick on and then you're gonna have enough light to give you good quality another big win for this camera is the actual layout ergonomics and the design of the camera and the user experience now let me tell you what I'm talking about first of all the shutter button on top and just the print lever on the back they feel high quality although the whole camera feels a little bit plastic it's not super light like the Kodak Ektar point-and-shoot camera it does have some heft to it and it doesn't feel like it's gonna just fall apart on you on the front of the lens you have this little controllable ring that changes some of your settings and then you have, weirdly, another button in front here, and this is another shutter button. And at first I was like, why would they place it there? But then I started to realize that this camera shoots in portrait and prints in portrait. So they don't want you to be shooting in landscape. And in older Instax cameras, I would constantly be shooting in the wrong orientation and the prints would come out upside down. So they alleviated this by putting this shutter button on the front so that when you grab the camera like this to use this shutter button, you're automatically going to move the camera into portrait mode and you're going to be shooting in the right orientation. Absolutely love that design. On top of that, when you have the camera gripped like this on the back, your thumb is now perfectly placed for another controllable ring here to be able to change more settings. So that ring and this front ring are easily accessible when you're holding it in portrait, which is how you should shoot this camera. It's nicely in my hand. This little ring on the back that is a thumb ring has a nice little indent here for your thumb to just sit nicely in there. So it's almost like a little thumb grip. When I hold it, it feels sturdy and secure in my hand and I really like the overall button layout. On top of that, you have some menus, some preview buttons down here that change more settings in the software, and those are also nicely placed for uh, portrait mode because you're gonna wanna view your images in portrait mode when you're reviewing them so that you know what they look like when they're printed out. Of course, I'm sure you're asking, what are these control dials controlling? Because this is a point and shoot camera, the settings are all automated. And that's a very good question. Let me get into that. Another fun little thing that they've included is some film simulations, just like you see in bigger Fuji bodies. So they have 10 film simulations overall, things like black and white and sepia and blue. And some are really cool, just give you a lot of creative control. You can change 
those by adjusting this front ring and that filters through the 10 different settings. In addition to the film simulations, the other control rings adjust lens simulations and those are different lens simulations that are actually really fun. They have vignetting, soft focus, blur, fisheye, color shift, light leak, mirror, double exposure. I love double exposure. That's a really creative one. I like shooting that a lot for some cool shots, especially when shooting into reflections or into windows. And then my favorite of the lens simulations, the half frame feature. So you can mix and match the lens simulations with different film simulations to really have a lot of different creativity and different shots that you like. And then, you know, touching on that, it would be a pain in the butt if you have to scroll through the lens simulation that you like and match it with the film simulation. It can take a lot of time. So they actually give you three or four different user uh, presets that you can save this film simulation with this lens simulation, save it into one setting, and then you can quickly cycle into that preset or user setting. It's such a simple little point and shoot camera, they have all these creative outlets that you could use and I absolutely love it. We've touched on the hardware and the design of this camera, but let's now talk about the user interface and the software, because that's where this camera really shines. Aside from all of that, the most brilliant feature of this camera is that it connects to your phone via Bluetooth and Wi-Fi using the app. And it's very, very reliable on the app. I've used it quite extensively now. And there is a little bit of a delay because you can shoot live view through your app and control the camera completely through your phone. And that's really cool for setting up group shots or party shots. And then you can pull out your phone, open the app, and you can control settings on the app. You can control the shutter. And you can even send the photos that you've taken over to your phone and save them on your camera roll, edit them up. And here's the most underrated thing about this whole camera. You can edit them up and then send them back to the camera and print them out instantaneously. Not only that, you can edit any phone you take on your phone, send it over to your camera and print it out and use this as like a mobile printer, instant printer. And I think that's a really undervalued feature of this Mini Evo. It's the only one that you can really use as a mobile printer. And honestly, if I'm being quite candid, I use that feature a lot, almost more than I do taking the photos on the camera. And it's probably because I really love the picture quality coming out of the phone. And I know that's not like really what this is is all about it's just a fun you know social camera but I love that feature and I use it a ton so far of taking photos on my phone editing them up how I like and then sending them over and printing them out on the Instax it's just really well implemented and probably the number one reason why this camera is in my bag 24 7 now the app is a little bit jaded if you will it's not like the most fancy seamless app that you have on your phone especially in live view so if you move the camera a lot around a lot when you're taking the photos and you're viewing it on your phone you're going to see quite a bit of lag and then some more practical things and cons that i don't like about the camera which is very very little uh, it doesn't come with a front lens cap at all. So this front lens is constantly exposed and it's really problematic because most people are gonna throw this into a bag, maybe even a purse or something like that with loose items. And if this lens gets scratched, you're absolutely screwed. It's gonna destroy the camera. So I would highly recommend finding some type of way to find a lens cover. Maybe a third party will come out with a lens cover, but that's probably its biggest flaw. And then another flaw I have is this camera has a rechargeable battery and I wish it came with a USB-C, but instead it comes with a micro USB. USB. And talking about that, it comes with a rated 100 prints per charge, but I didn't get anywhere near that. And I think, you know, that has to do a lot with how many pictures you're taking digitally per print. But that was just me. I didn't get anywhere near that. I got almost half that in about 50 prints. My overall user experience is that I'm in love with this camera. It is so much fun. It is so much fun for my children to use. It's fun for social settings. It's fun for people that aren't photographers. This is a great everyday camera and a perfect present for photographers or for teenagers. Teenagers, this camera is going to be really, really well liked by whoever owns it. It comes in at about $200 and the prints cost about 60 cents each. I've seen some deals on those, especially on Black Friday. So check out my links below. I'll try to find some for you at Best Buy or Target or whatnot. But for me, I highly recommend this camera for photographers or non-photographers. Like teenagers would love this camera. I'm going to be buying them for my friends and family for Christmas and birthday presents in the future. It's just a really, really great little fun toy to have, especially for two hundred bucks. And that may be pricey for some. I totally understand. If it is, check out my video on the Kodak Ektar 35H. That's another point and shoot film camera that I absolutely love. And that only costs 50 bucks. If I brought you any value or entertainment, hit me with a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe for more awesome videos. What do you guys think? Are you going to be picking one of these up? If you are, check out my links below. It really helps out my little channel. I appreciate y'all. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.